Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at an application of a centrifugal clutch in a transmission system. The guiding question says, a centrifugal clutch shown below is at the rest position. The rotating bobs are each of mass 225 grams and the spring stiffness is 7.5 kN per meter. The center of mass of each bob is at 150 mm radius in the rest position. This is the centrifugal clutch that we are talking about and we have this shaft bringing the motion and this one taking away motion. These are the springs that we are talking about and these are the rotating bobs that are at a radius of 150 millimeter and uh, the spring would extend or undergo an extension of 12 millimeter to the surface of the clutch or to the face of the clutch and that is the outward motion uh, shaft or what we can call the driven shaft now the question that is required is uh, uh, for for us to calculate the radio force on the clutch face at 720 revolutions per minute and also to determine the coefficient of friction on the rim if the total friction torque is 22.9 newton meter when the number of bulbs are four this is the rim that we are talking about and we need the coefficient of friction between the bulb and the rim let's go now when we draw out a free body diagram of that system let us just create one part of the centrifugal clutch this is the bulb um if we list down a number of forces that are acting on it one we have this radio they are all radio forces uh, this f1 is the force that acts on the bulb due to the centrifugal forces acting on a rotating mass so the f1 is a centrifugal force that pushes the bulb outwards to make a contact with the rim and thereby uh due to the application of uh, a friction force this uh the the drive shaft can transmit uh, uh motion outward to the driven shaft then f2 is the returning uh spring force of course the force that would act or that will be uh stored in the spring uh of course when the mode the speed of of, of rotation reduces the centrifugal force reduces also and the spring forces restore try to restore the springs to their normal size or to their usual size then due to the contact of this bob on here on the rim a radio force that acts on the clutch surface uh, is set in and therefore we are required to calculate this radio force that acts on the clutch face the data given to us is that we have the revolution of the system at 720 revolutions per minute and we are required to change this angular speed to radians per second therefore we know it is 2 pi n divided by 60 in radians per second whereby this n is in revolutions per minute so if i bring in the figure given to us i will have 24 24 pi radians per second the extension of the spring to make uh, contact with the uh, rim uh, is x we are calling it x and it is equal to 12 millimeters converting it to meters to be 0 0.12 meters then the spring constant is 7.5 kN per meter and converting it to newton per meter it would be 7.5 times 10 to power 3 newton per meter then the rotational radius uh, the radius at which uh, this uh, component is rotating we know that uh, the bobs are at a distance of 150 millimeter then remember they have to extend 12 millimeter to contact the rim of the clutch therefore the rotation radius during the transmission of the rotation motion from the driver to the driven shaft would be 150 plus 12 divided by a thousand to convert it to, to meters and this would give us 0 0.162 meters then the mass is uh, 225 grams and converting it to kilograms it would be 0 0.225 kilograms 
Let's now define these forces F2, F1, and R. And using uh, the equilibrium conditions, we are able to proceed and calculate for R. F2 is the restoring force in the spring, and according to Hooke's law, it is uh, directly proportional to the extension of the spring and uh, introducing in the constant of proportionality that force would be equal to kx whereby k is the spring constant and x is the extension so multiplying the two to give us 7.5 times 10 power 3 times 0 0.012 which is the extension giving us 90 newton then the centrifugal force that acts on a rotating body is uh, a product of mass times the square of angular velocity times the radius of rotation. Uh, then, remember, mass is given, uh, all these other quantities are given, and therefore it's a matter of substituting in. Uh, therefore, if 1 is equal to 0 0.225 times uh, 2 pi radians per second, we are squaring it, then times R, which is 0 0.162, uh, then it would give us 207.2 newtons. Then from equilibrium, we can see that uh, F2 plus, plus R is equal to F1. So we can just uh, substitute in our values. We see we have 90 plus R is equal to 207.2. R would give us 207.2. 0.2 minus 90. This R is therefore equal to 102, 107.2 newtons. So the radio force on the face of the clutch is equal to 117.2 newtons. This reaction or radio force on the face of the clutch is what actually maintains the torque that is going to be transmitted to the driven shaft because a time reaches when the spring force becomes a constant whereby the centrifugal force keeps on increasing so the centrifugal force results into this r and it is this r that maintains a contact between the bob the rotating bob and the clutch rim of course resulting into the generation of a friction force or the maintaining of the friction force that results into a friction torque that leads into the transmission of motion to the breathing shaft. Let us look at the, the next part of this question that is telling us to calculate or determine the coefficient of friction between the bobs and the clutch face. So let that uh, coefficient of friction between the bobs and the clutch face be nu. Now, we must note that the uh, R is responsible for the torque and power transmitted by the clutch. As we have already said, uh, this comes into play when the centrifugal forces increase, the restoring force in the spring becomes constant. And so, this uh, friction force that is at the bob is equal to new R. So remember that we are told that there are four bobs and uh, that's why I'm indicating the reaction and the friction force at each bob. Uh, if the angular velocity is omega, uh, therefore it, it means we will have all these forces acting on the bobs, the several bobs that are in that uh, centrifugal clutch. Since that area is responsible for the friction torque, we can say that the total friction torque uh, Ft is equal to nu R times R. Of course, the new R is the friction force, but since we are looking at torque, torque is uh, a turning moment. So the, that friction force times its turning moment from the turning point. The turning point is at the center. Since uh, this force is acting radially, uh, uh, it is acting at the surface, almost at the surface, then the torque would be the product of this force FR times, times the radius at which uh, it is acting. So the radius is R and uh, the force is new R, therefore the friction torque becomes new R times the radius or the perpendicular distance at which that force is acting. Therefore, that total friction torque, uh, remember they are four balls, they are four balls, so we would do multiply that uh, friction torque by 4. So this becomes 4 new R times R. This value is equal to 22.9 Newton meter as provided 
in the above scenario. Therefore, 22.9 is equal to for new RR. If we substitute in the values given, uh, R is calculated above, and this more R, the radius of rotation is known as um, 0.162. Therefore, substituting in would tell us that uh, this one and that one would go. Then we have, we will have new equal to 22.9 divided by 4 times 117.2 times 0.162. And this gives us new or the coefficient of friction between the bob and uh, the rim as 0 0.3. And remember, the coefficient of friction has no value. Thank you so much.